In today's video I'm going to be creating luminosity masks in Photoshop and showing you exactly how I do it. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you do and you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This video is one that I've actually been asked about doing for quite a while and somehow I've just never got around to it. And it's all about creating luminosity masks in Photoshop. So luminosity masks can be really useful as a way to apply certain effects to only certain parts of an image. They can also be a good way to blend images together. So for example, if you've got an exposure taken exposed for the highlights and one exposed for the shadows and maybe one in the middle. Luminosity masks, luminosity masks can be a great way to blend those images together uh, without doing a lot of fiddly messing around with brushes. And uh, I thought I'd show you, first of all, how I go about creating luminosity masks. A little tiny bit on using them. Uh, just as an example to show you basically how the masks that I'm going to create work. And then uh, a couple of ways that you can avoid a lot of work every time you want to use luminosity masks. So let's uh, get onto the computer and have a look and uh, talk about luminosity masks. Okay, so we're in Photoshop and I've got an image open here, which I'm going to use as a way to create my luminosity masks. To do this, I'm going to start off by going into my channels. And you can see there I've got RGB, I've got red, green and blue. I'm going to start off by doing a command click on the RGB channel, which is going to make a selection. And that is actually my first luminosity mask. So I'm going to click down on this little button down the bottom here uh, to save the selection as a channel. And it'll come up as Alpha 1, and that is my first luminosity mask created. And if I just take that off, you can see what that's doing is favouring the highlights a bit and darkening the shadows a bit in this kind of black and white view. And if I put the selection back on, you can see from the marching ants the areas that it's selecting. What I'm now going to do is refine that so that I'm focusing more on the highlights. So I'm going to do Shift, Option, uh, no, yeah, Shift, Option, Command, <laughs> click. That would be Shift, Alt, Control on a PC. And I'm gonna click on the Alpha 1 channel again. And that's refining my selection quite a bit. So I'm gonna go down and add this as a channel, and that's my Alpha 2 channel. If I click on that, you can see that's refining in on the highlights even more. I'm going to repeat that again, Shift, Option, Command. That would be Shift, Alt, Control on a PC. And I'm going to click on there again, and that's refining it in even further. And that's my third channel. And I'm going to keep doing this until I've got six channels. So let's do that. Okay, now I've got my six um, bright or highlight channels. This one's a pretty broad selection, if I make the selection on it. Um, take the selection off, and this one down here is obviously very, very targeted. You can see it's only selecting the very, very brightest areas. So that's my highlight channels done. What I now need to do is my uh, dark area or shadows or low lights, whatever you want to call them. So we're gonna go Command D and make sure that all my selections are cleared. Back up onto the RGB channel. And I'm going to, once again, do a command click, which will make a selection. But now I'm going to invert that selection. So I'm going to go select inverse. 
and this is going to be my first uh, low lights, dark areas, shadows, uh, luminosity mask. So I'm going to save that and that will give me alpha 7. And then it's the same process to refine this. So shift option command or shift alt control. Click on there and that gives me a more refined one which I save. Alpha 8. Same for the next one. And I'm just going to keep refining this by going to the next channel, holding down those three keys, shift, option, command, or shift, alt, control, clicking on it, and then saving that selection as a new channel. And again, I'm going to keep going until I've got six channels, or six luminosity masks. So what I've now got is a set of low lights or shadows or, or dark area masks. So you can see this one here is a pretty broad mask. If I hold down the command or control key and click on it, you can see where the marching ants are. Uh, and if I come down, I know, let's go to Alpha 11, you can see that that one uh, is only selecting uh, the really dark areas in the frame. So now I need to create my mid-tone masks. So I'm going to start off on Alpha 1. I'm going to do Command A, which selects everything. So it's select all, basically. And then I'm going to do uh, Option, Command, Click. That would be Alt, Control, Click on a PC to make a selection. And then I'm going to come down to Alpha 7. So that's my, it's the first one is my uh, highlights mask. Alpha 7 is my shadows or low lights mask. And I'm going to do the same on that. So I'm basically subtracting both of those from the selection of all. If I get an error message come up, I can ignore it. And then I'm going to create, uh, we'll save that selection now as a channel. So I've now got channel 13, which is favoring the midtones. Back onto alpha 2, select all again, command A or control A, and then option command or alt control and click on alpha 2, and also option command or alt command and click on uh, alpha 8. And that creates my next one. Back up here, select all again, Command A, Option Command on Alpha 3, and on Alpha 9, and save it. And I'm just going to complete that until I've got six mid-tone uh, masks created. Okay, and now I can see my mid-tones masks, which again, as I go through, produces more and more. So, you know, Alpha 18 is really uh, allowing any adjustments to be almost entirely across the scene. However, you know, Alpha 13 is a bit more targeted on the mid-tones. Now, what you can now do if you want to, you don't have to, is you can rename these channels to make them easier to use. Um, some people use bright, dark, and mid. Uh, some people use highlights, shadows, and mid-tones. Um, I keep it fairly simple and just do like low one. Uh, sorry, no I don't. I do high one <laughs> on the highlights. Um, high two and so on, and then on the uh, the shadow ones, I tend to do low one, 
flow to. And then on the mid-tones, I test tend to do mid-1, mid-2, etc. I'm not going to go through all of them now, um, because otherwise the video is going to get long. What we need to do now is have a quick look at using these things. So I'm going to come back up to my RGB, make sure that I've cleared all my selections with Command-D or Control-D. Come back onto this image and uh, for the purposes of demonstration I'm going to do something that makes it very obvious what's happening. So I'm going to put another layer on top, working on two screens and it disappeared off the screen. Uh, and I'm going to fill that layer with a solid colour, not black, we'll go for, uh, let's go for red shall we. So I've put a red layer over the top there. Now let's say that I wanted to put red on this picture, I've no idea why I would want to, but uh, I only want it to be in the highlight areas. So what I can do is I can come down and look at my luminosity masks and find the one that I think gives me the best uh, masking option. So remember white reveals, black conceals. So if I use this mask anything that's white is going to show the red through, anything that's black the red is going to be hidden uh, and greys are going to, you know, varying shades of greys will let through varying amounts of that layer. So if I do a command click on here that will make a selection. I can then come back up to RGB and select that, back onto my layers and if I now come down here and click layer mask, you can now see where that red is showing through where I've created the layer mask. And of course, if I want to refine it even further, um, what I can do is take that layer, hit command G or control G to create a group, put another layer mask on, and then I can just take a brush, maybe take a black brush, uh, and I can kind of paint out any areas that I don't want. So that's the basic process for creating those masks. Now of course it's a bit of a pain to do that on any image that you want to uh, create luminosity masks on. So there's a couple of ways to get around that. If you want to do it yourself, then the easiest way to do it is to go into your actions, create a new action, and simply go through the process that I've just been through, including any naming that you want to do, and record it. And then when you want to use it again, uh, let's pick another image, I can now click on the thing that says luminosity masks, click on play, and it will take a few seconds to run through that, but now I've got all of my luminosity masks created appropriate for this particular image. The other way you can do this is that there are lots of plugins that you can get for Photoshop that um, not only do luminosity masks but do all sorts of other bits and pieces as well, other bits of clever stuff as well. Uh, I'm not going to recommend any because I don't have any experience, but if you search luminosity masks in Photoshop, I'm sure you will find some of the people out there that are either giving away or selling these, uh, these plugins. Okay everyone, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe found it informative. Uh, if you have, please give it a like, share it on social media, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, if you're new here and you've liked this video and maybe seen some of the other stuff that I do, um, you know, maybe consider hitting subscribe. And uh, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, so thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.